No matter what it looks like. No matter what it feels like. You can show up. You can stand up as your authentic self. And bring It's another wonderful day and thank you so much for joining us again here with bring who you are today we are going to continue our series on domestication so go ahead and tell your friends to come on in and go ahead like share and start a watch party and don't forget as I always say go ahead and get a pad you know why because you're gonna want to take down these notes today as we talk about domestication of religion you know, many times, many of us have been involved in churches for many, many years, and we've learned to think and believe a certain way, only to find out that maybe that's not the 100% right way. And that's okay, because today we're going to dispel some myths and we're going to impart some truths. And we ask that you just embrace it all and use what works for you in your life and your family and what's right for you as we discuss the domestication of religion. So today I tell you, go ahead, like, share, and start a watch party. And we're going to come right back with our awesome tribe to bring who you are. So let's get ready to get on fire with bring who you are. Be right back. No matter what it's been like, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, you can show up. You can stand up as your authentic self and bring who you are. All right, folks, thank you for being here today. We have a phenomenal show underway for you. And I'd like you to please, please get yourself relaxed. Go ahead and get yourself something to drink. And many of you want to know what's in my cup. So I'm going to share what's in my cup. I've got some lemon tea. It's quite delicious. I'm going to take a sip. Ooh, that's good. A little bit tart too. A little bit tart. I don't know what my baby put in there, but it's a little bit tart. But anyway, go ahead and get yourself something to drink because all of us on our tribe, we're going to have something tasty to drink. So I want you please to welcome one of the first tribe members that's coming up with us. She is from Dallas, Texas. She's a best-selling author. She's a woman entrepreneurship coach and a three-time competitor with Carol Guys. She is the first Black Miss USA and the Miss Universe first runner-up. She is, that's right. Please welcome the beautiful Miss Pamela Lou Hing. Hey, Pam. Hello. Great, great, great afternoon. I'm so glad to be with you. And you know what? I have to, I wish I could take the accolades of being the first Black Miss USA, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood. I know you know Lotus, but I want to yes. make sure everybody else knows I competed with the first Black Miss USA. So, Miss Carol Giz. And you did quite well, too. And you <laughs> did quite well. Y'all, she's very modest. She did very well. Um, so, yeah, so thank you so much because we don't want to like mislead nobody, you know. Right, right. <laughs> what can I say? So, 
please, folks, just know that we are going to have a wonderful time. We are not going to be the runner up. We're going to be number one and help you be number one and bring in who you are. So with that being said, I want you, please, please, to make sure you welcome the next person that we're bringing up in the tribe. Uh, I'll let I'll let Pam uh, uh, tell a little bit about her if she wants. Um, we know she's got that Jamaica man thing going, right? I, I can't do it any better than you, Lotus. You are just superb. So <laughs> <laughs> the next woman we want to bring into the fold is a phenomenal, phenomenal woman within her own right. And she just brings so much wealth uh, around the civility concept. Uh, she's just an incredible woman. I'm so glad that she's a part of our sister tribe. Let's yes. welcome Woo -woo! Harper. All the way from Canada. There oh we go. <laughs> what, a, what an introduction. Oh my, you make me blush. <laughs> All right. So Thank you, wonderful. lovely, lovely women. It is so nice to be here again. I look forward to these Saturdays, not only to speak with our fellow tribe members watching, but the bring who you are tribe on this it's it's become a sisterhood and i i am so grateful uh to be part of it thank you thank you thank you thank you so much and i know many of you are wondering okay am i gonna get in trouble on the show if i show my face because i know you guys got a judge in the house the answer is no you're not gonna get in trouble even though she's taking it from the seat to the street, coming all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina, I want you guys to welcome our famous judge. She's a survivor, and she, of course, she studied abroad. She's been in Spain, Argentina, Costa Rica, and of course, she continues to do her duty in North Carolina as she brings it from the judge's seat to the street. Please welcome Judge Kimberly Best. Hey, Kim. Uh-oh. She's on mute. We can't hear you. Let me see if I can unmute you. Unmute, babe. My apologies. Good day. Good day, ladies. Hey, good day. Good to be good to here. See you. so good to see everyone. So glad awesome. I'm part of this tribe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I don't do anything else, I make sure on Saturdays, every other Saturday that I am here with you all. Yes. And this was a rough week. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but I am glad to be here. I know, but you know what, folks, and, and I'm happy you said that, Judge, because mm -hmm. a lot of people are having a rough time, mm -hmm. and still, yeah. they, they're they showing up, they're bringing who they are, right. so thank you so much for sharing that, because people need to know that they can still bring who they are, even in the roughest of Absolutely. times. Absolutely. So, yeah. the next tribe member we are gonna bring up, she's a little songbird y'all she's a comedian in her own right and of course she's brilliant she's contributed to many of the songs on the color purple i want you to bring just just give her a hearty welcome none other than dr cecilia sims well good morning everybody i'm gonna try morning. not to joke today okay but this is a good day this is the day the lord has made and i am so grateful for being here with my flutter of sisters. I call them my spiritual sorority sisters, y'all. Yeah. And y'all just yeah. hang with us because yes. we're going to give you some good stuff today. Yes, we are. And so many of you know that we have a tribe and this is not the total tribe. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you a little bit about two of our other sisters. They're always with us. They're always with mm -hmm. us no matter what we're doing. And so we would be remiss if we didn't share with you our wonderful tribe member, Jemijah Jubilee, and I'm sure she's watching us from afar, but she's right here with us. So we, we'd be remiss not to show you this picture. For those of you that's just joining us and may not be familiar with Jemijah Jubilee, she is also a strong member of this tribe. So give it up for Jemijah Jubilee as well. Come on, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, and one other tribe member, the timekeeper, the the hostess <laughs> with the mostest. Okay, I got to, I got to go there. Let me let me get this up here, y'all. If I I don't know what I would do without having this particular tribe member by our side collectively because she keeps us on time. She keeps things rolling. And I'm going to tell you, if I don't hurry up and show her face, she's going to call me and say, Lotus, get, hurry up. 
So this is our <laughs> other wonderful tribe member, Karen Aww. KJ Johnson. <laughs> hey, love, we know you is. <laughs> so we about to get this party started right. And we want to say thank you so much for spending your time with us. So I see folks streaming in already, ladies. So let's go ahead and look who awesome. we have with us. Chika Kumo, good oh. to see you. She is coming in from Nigeria, Yay. I think. If not, let us know where you're coming in from. And we've got some other folks saying, hey, Queens, good to see you. And saying we are amazing and so are you. So thank you so much. Hello, Angela from Washington, D.C. Hello, Cheryl Murphy. She is from Nigeria. Good to see you. Simone Rowe all the way from Canada. Hello, hello, hello. And Henry Lewis Eddy. Oh, my God. Thank you super duper famous guy if you're a gospel singer and you have not been to one of his shows you need to go so thank you so much and he loves our topic of course so with that being said we are getting ready to get the show fired up as we talk about the domestication of religion so we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna come right back and talk about the domestication of religion. Because after all, you never know what you don't know. You might be surprised. Be right back. No matter what it's been like, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, you can show up. You can stand up as your authentic self and bring who you are. Well, good morning and God bless you. We're talking about domestication of religion. I have to paint this picture before we go forward. And I wrote this, oh goodness, about 10, 11 years ago. And follow me with this. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Oh, we're so excited. It's Sunday. We're getting ready to go to what we call church. So everybody is getting ready and getting prepared. Despite of what's going on in the household, I have to piggyback on the household because it starts there and it's carried over into the religious aspect of it. So I laid my burdens down. Guess what? When I got to the church, people were rushing in. The choir was in line to march in. The ushers were at the door. The entourage of the pastoral staff walked in from the side door. Uh, the deacons were in their prospective places and what we call missionaries were in their places. People were sitting in the chairs with excitement. But I looked over the audience. Some of them had frowns on their faces. Some of them weren't as excited as others. Oh, but the organ started playing and the horns and the piano started playing. But guess what? When they opened the doors, the choir who looked despondent in the uh, while they were waiting, who looked sad while they were waiting, they changed their persona. And when they walked in, it was like, oh, my goodness, heaven came down as they began to sing. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I lay my burdens down and they marched on down the aisle and they got into the choir stand. All oh, people were up clapping and shouting and clapping their hands and it was just an awesome sight. But after they got in the choir stand and the song was over, they sat the choir down as we normally do. I used to be a choir director. So we sit the choir down and as they sat down and then the atmosphere, the atmosphere came to reality. I began to peruse the audience and see exactly who was there. You had some who weren't clapping, some who weren't smiling. You had some who sat next to them, nudging them, nudging them in the side and said, why aren't you singing? Why aren't you smiling? In other words, it was that dogma, that domestic type of atmosphere. The domesticator was sitting next to the victim. All right. So you don't, maybe you won't understand that, but the domesticator, the one who injected uh -huh, the truth 
training uh -huh, attributes on an individual was sitting next to me and they wanted you to act out what they don't want you to see that came from the home. So therefore you had to change faces. You change faces in the public's eye. And so therefore when I proved the audience and I thought, okay, we're talking about domestication, faith, fact, or fears. And a lot of people sit in places where they are very fearful because they're afraid to be free. And we're going to deal with freedom today. When you face freedom, free people cannot be controlled. Domestication calls people to be in restraints. And we will talk about that in the later segment, but it calls people to be restra in restraints. They're held in captivity. They're also held in a bondage arena. Therefore, they're not really, really having a great relationship with God because they've been domesticated. They've been trained as the one in our last segments that been trained like trained puppies. You know, they adapted. They will conform to a certain arena on how to do things. So therefore religion, we have to deal with religion. Religion is a constant practice. Doesn't mean that it's legit. All right. It's a learned behavior. We can be religious in many areas of our lives. So we have to dispel the religion aspect of it because many people have erred in their way when it comes to religion. People can form a religion tomorrow. They can say, I'll use this and it becomes a religion. But that doesn't mean that it's fact. Religious, we're going to deal with fact, uh, faith, and fear. So in our next segment, I want you to understand that I'm not trying to talk against what you believe, but I believe that we need to be enhanced on what we believe and knowing that, you know, when God sets us free, we're not to be controlled through domestication. God bless you. But here in this faith, what is faith? It's a firm belief in something for which there is no proof. How can you believe that the wind is blowing? unless you see the evidence of the wind. You see the evidence of the wind when, you see the evidence of the wind when the leaves are moving or when your garments are swaying. You know that something is going on. That's your faith factor. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of not things not seen. We believe that there is a God. There is an evidence in what we talked about. We believe that thing. Faith is the substance, not through fear, not through training. It's a relationship. It's a relationship that you form with God. Wow. And we are back. Dr. Sims. Amazing. 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 I got to tell you, I was in awe listening to what you were saying because it's unequivocal. Many of us have been domestic have been in domestication in religion. And many of us have stepped away from religion because of it. What a powerful, powerful conversation today. So those of you, we've got so many people streaming in, so many people streaming in. Those of you that, that understand that, yes, you can be in a position where you, you, you suffer, if you will, from domestication. If you understood what Dr. Sim said, please put a number two in the comment below because she got this thing started off right. I thought I was going to be backstage shouting when she got started. Oh my God. Woo! Because we have had a tough week in this world and you brought it to the forefront. So Dr. Sims, can you go ahead and tell us a little more about the domestication of religion as you led off? You said we're going to be talking about faith, facts, and fear. 
when it comes to domestication of religion. So go ahead and keep leading us in. Faith, we have to deal with the faith aspect of it because I believe that down through the years, many have erred in their way, in their trajectory of faith and what they want us to believe. Some things have been forced on us. And through generations of time, we've been led through the faith avenues because our grandparents believe this, our uncles believe this, and this is the way that you're going to believe. So therefore you have no choice in the matter because religion is something that is custom that's learned, that's a constant practice, and that you religiously go to work, right? You religiously go to school, you religiously, hopefully you wash your face, amen. Religiously amen. take a shower, amen, clean yourself. That's a religious practice. But when you learn spirituality, it's different from religion. It is a personal relationship that you come to know our God. We can project our own opinions on people, and it has been done that way. And yes. a lot of people have been projecting error in error. So therefore, they projected fear in a lot of our growing up as children or as youth, as young adults. Fear, the dogma mentality that has been projected. When I mean by dogma, the demand that you believe the way we believe, the demand that you, you know, you pray the way we pray, the demand that you act out in the act in the way that you saw your grandmother act out. And most times your grandmother didn't act out right. Amen. Because she showed two faces. One face over here in the house we call church and something else at home, just like parents or children. The domestication taught us how to mimic, taught us how to portray what we've learned and we desire that thinking that it's right. But when you come to a personal relationship, because a lot of times in our walk as growing up as young men and women, we we were injected fear. And I believe I said that. And fear is something that is projected on, on you that you have no say in how you feel. Okay. Domestication does that. It makes you, you know, makes you believe that, you know what? If I don't do it the way they tell me to do it, if I don't sing or clap the way they tell me to do it, then yep. I'm, I'm going to suffer the repercussions later because you yes. have to realize, Pam, I remember what you said at home. All of this starts at home and it's carried mm -hmm. over. It doesn't mean that, you know, you get yourself get totally clean when you go to religion. No, you yes. carry that. Those learned behaviors from home to the next phase in your life, you carry them to your jobs, to the next phase or what have you. You learn how to act, should I say. Yes. You learn how to act out things, making it a reality. But when you come to the knowledge of the truth and knowing that the scripture says, he who the Lord set free is free to be. That's fact. OK. And when he says that, it's not to cause fear. It's cause for you to walk with yes. God in the belief and the stand that, you know, you form your own relationship. Because I found out in religion, it, it is not your opinion. You don't have an opinion about it, but a relationship with God. You form your own opinion when it's when your walk with God. It is your own yes. mind process, your own how you feel what God has done for you, because I share this. Many don't know what God has done for you. Some people withhold that because of domestication, because they don't want anybody, because I don't want to, what do they say, uh, kick against the, the brick. I don't yes. want to change things in the family structure. So I don't want them to think that I think different than them. So I'll go along with what has been presented. But that's not what God wants us to do in our spiritual walk. You have to have a relation with him. Is it fiction? Fiction is painting a delusional uh, uh, picture about the reality of, I'm going to say, because I don't like religion, the word religion, because that's a practice. I'm talking about your spiritual walk with God your spiritual move in your own life with God. We can only be trained so much, you know, you go to church and you're trained to do this. You're trained to clap your hands. You're trained to yep. stand. You're trained what time to pray. You're trained what time when to pray. You're trained when to wash dishes. You're trained when to, you know, make up the bed. Time, 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 you know, but, but we have to get to the reality. There is a freedom. There is a freedom in this walk and we've held people hostage behind our theories, our old way of thinking, because they've been in error. It's been a generational taught behavior. And so therefore you get the domesticators 
who are mm -hmm, licensed domesticators in the arena of guiding God's children, domesticating still their training. So you become puppets and that's not what God wants. That's right. So, wow. With that said, I want to trickle right over to the lady on the seat that's been taking it to the streets because it's unquestionable that the domestication of religion on the faith Avenue even goes into the court with us. When we go into the courtroom about what we believe uh, with legal system and the religious system. So judge, what about the faith Avenue? Well, I think one of the things I was just thinking about when, she, when Dr. Sims was talking about religion and the practice of religion and that she doesn't like that word because it is a practice. You know, I religiously uh, yeah. get up every morning, brush my teeth. I religiously clean my face, take a shower, go to work. Mm -hmm. But when we talk about the intersection between the law and religion, you cannot escape that. Of course, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later, but this country was essentially founded on the premise that you would have the right to exercise uh, your whatever your religious practice may be. And that was because they, the founding fathers of the United States of America, as we now know it, they didn't want to necessarily practice Catholicism or be part of the Church of England, right? They wanted, they were Protestants. They wanted to be able to speak to their God directly. And so when you look at our laws and the way they are set up, for example, I used to practice bankruptcy. I know that the Bible says, oh, after seven years, you know, you're supposed right. to free your slaves or give them or make them free of debt. Well, seven years for a chapter seven bankruptcy, you, you, you have, you, you're free of your debt. Think about your credit report. Your credit report, things, the bad late payments come off of your credit report after seven years. Mm -hmm. Right. And I can go on and on. There are still laws on the books here in North Carolina that prevent sodomy, that are contrary, that prevent um, uh, not only sodomy, but even let's talk about divorce. Um, even though, you know, I think I don't know what our, everyone's religion is, but I was dare say the majority of us were Protestants. And so, you know, there's uh, rules around divorce, but in Catholicism, you, you mm -hmm. get an annulment because divorce is not allowed, but for certain reasons. Right. And so there's an intersection and I've had people come to me to ask for annulments. Um, based on certain criteria, and the, the criteria was actually based on religious principles. So there's a huge intersection between the religion. We can talk about the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not bear false witness, don't covet with your neighbor. All of those laws are in the book, still in North Carolina. So there's a huge intersection and we have to be mindful of that. But the question I think is whether or not, um, I don't know that there's so much of fear, but those are specifically facts that I can give right now when we talk about religion and the influence of that. Of course, we've had cases you know, with the Supreme Court that have overturned some of these principles that are based in religion, i.e. the sodomy law, you know, or same-sex couples and or marriage. We know that that is allowed. Um, throughout the country at this point, but just think about it, at one point it, it wasn't. Um, and we can just go down this. We know that slavery was legal at one point, and religion was often used as a reason to keep slaves yeah. essentially in check to domesticate the yeah. slaves and to make sure that they were in compliant. Because if you were not compliant according to the word of God, then you're not a good slave. You're going to hell, and you're not going to heaven. So yes. it, the overarching reach is just, it's, it's tremendous. And so, you know, we can probably talk about that a little bit more, but we just have to be mindful uh, of those facts and the yeah. history. Wow. That's, that's super powerful. That's super powerful what you said, because really it's, it's about keeping people in their place mm -hmm. in so many ways, keeping people in their place. And, we don't, this is, see, this is why Bring Who You Are was created. Because when we all came together, we all came on a show and then we was like, wait a minute, people need to bring who they are. Right. Everybody just need to show up. But if we're taught how we should show up without understanding, we can show up just as we are. 
and bring right. who we are. We never move from the domestication of family. Like uh, uh, Pam, sh sh she just set it off with that one. And then yep. we never move out of the domestication of religion, you know, just like Dr. Sims just exploded on right. the screen today. We never move out of that premise. So, wow, that's that's powerful. If if you like what if you like what Judge Kimberly said, put a four, a number four in the comment below. Because when we go, we coming back and we're gonna get on the next aspect as Dr. Sims lead us into the next criteria of what we're talking about. Uh, but before we do that, we gotta hear from the remarkable Dr. Harper and the amazing Pam Lu Hing when we come back on this faith thing. Because we, we ain't done yet. We're talking about the faith thing. So we're going to be right back. All right. Thank you for being back with us. We got some fours in the house. Good to see you. And definitely, <laughs> definitely want to thank you, Malik Lorenzo, on the day. It's good to see you. Malik said, faith is the instruction of purpose. It distinguishes as learning, walking, and wisdom. And I want to say, before we uh, go right to Dr. Uh, Harper, I want to take a couple other comments because I've seen so many comments streaming in uh, all, from all over the place. And I just want to say thank you so much, Dr. Charmaine pa uh, Powell. She says, yes, that was powerful. Uh, all the way from Nigeria, Miss Murphy saying, hello, ladies. And I've got a bunch of folks right here because I can't do it with one device. So uh, just so many people streaming in. So um, Janet, Janet Walker, phenomenal writer. Great to see you on the show, Janet. I know you're always on the road. Let us know where you're streaming in from. Deirdre Douglas, good to see you. And Janelle, Janelle, the CEO of She Exists, is on watching. Um, thank you for streaming in and letting us know about that share button. We're working on that. Larry Bush from Georgia, we see you. Thank you for joining us. April Hopkins, we see you. Happy that you're here. And everybody else that's streaming in, if I don't get to say hi to you, hello, and we love you. And we're going to keep moving and keep on keeping on, as Gladys Knight says, <laughs> with this show. So, Dr. Harper, can you tell us a little bit about your idea of the faith aspect? And then we're going kick to the, kick the baton right over to Pamela Lu Hing, and then we're going to move right on. Well, my faith aspect was very confused. I was born a Jewess to, you know, and um, then I grew up as a Jehovah's Witness. Hmm. And then I yeah. married an Anglican and christened my children as Anglican. Wow. So my domestication of religion was very cross. And, I, and I'll and be honest, I'm from a country that I'm proud to say has the most churches per capita, was mm -hmm. formed off of religious freedom because a lot of Jews came to Jamaica escaping the Spanish Inquisition. Mm -hmm. And even in the wickedest city of the world, which was Port Royal, you had about five different religions in the one little place. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the most churches per capita in Jamaica, you can actually find every religion. And I was proud to even participate in polka mania sessions. I was in Kumana. I used to do cultural dance. So I studied mm -hmm. Kumana. And when we had people from West Africa come, they couldn't believe that it was exactly done as in West Africa. And so many generations had passed. Mm -hmm. And what I was proud of is that we all inherited or I got to experience all these different types of religion. And that's where, how I grew up, that religion was faith, a faith in God. And I was blessed that my father always said, especially growing up in such a strict religion as a Jehovah's Witness, would say, your relationship with God is between you and God. 
not the people you attend with. Mm -hmm. And that's where faith came about with me. And at one point I allowed religion and the people in it mm -hmm. to affect my faith and I got lost. And it's just recently that I've found my way back to God. Um, COVID especially because I was trying to find my way back through a religion. So I went to synagogue for the first time. I went to Anglican. I, I was like, where? I can't find it. I can't find my faith because I was always trying to find a religion to find it through. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I found spirituality that I found my mm -hmm. faith back into God. And that is what faith is to me, a Jewess, Jehovah's Witness, Anglican, who has studied Rastafarianism and, you know, even the indigenous ways of, of spirituality. And that's where it is. I think we need to go back to our roots far beyond when religion was, as Dr. as Judge Best said so appropriately, put women in their place. I mean, I had to say obey in my uh -huh. marriage vows. Uh -huh. And the and the pre, and the Anglican priest was not bending on it. I had to say it, you know. So it was religion is conformity of and 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 domestication of its highest true nature because it's just reinforcing what the family should do at home. Wow, you know it, it's so interesting that many of us come from different backgrounds. Many of you know that I grew up, um, I went to Catholic grammar school, Catholic high school. Uh, I studied uh, the Buddhist religion. I studied mm. Hindu religion. Um, I studied, uh, I, I was actually a part of the Pentecostal church for many years, uh, but my father was a Muslim minister. Uh, I am an ordained elder. And the thing that I learned above all is that every uh, religious organization, they all have a belief in the higher power. Yes. But many of us just get to the higher power differently or we make different rules. I think Judge kind of tapped on that. We make yeah. different rules on how to get there. Mm -hmm. But I heard uh, Dr. Sims talk about we can all get there. And we all should have our faith, no matter what it looks like. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that your faith is wrong or your faith is right, but we all should have some type of faith if that's what we choose. And I'm so happy to be a part of bring who you are, because this is what it's about. Bring who you are. So Pam, what uh, help us out here. What's, what's good? <laughs> well, imagine uh, Pamela Luhing at two years old. And her mom, at my mom, let me go ahead and say it that way. My mom had taken me to church. And I remember this. Uh, and so here we are in the Baptist church. And all of a sudden, this woman takes off and this man runs after her. That's all I saw. I got home. Daddy, daddy, daddy. This woman was running. This man was after her. And oh, my good, in my little two-year-old head. That's all I mm -hmm. understood at two. And so my mom was Baptist, my father was Lutheran, but yet I went to Catholic schools for 12 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was baptized in the Baptist church at 16. It wasn't until I had that personal encounter that I began to truly understand who God is and was in my life. And I was about 22, 23 years old. And I was in the hospital. I, I had made a decision. I walked on faith and I had a huge decision before me, one that my mama couldn't be there for me. My friends, my girlfriends couldn't be there for me. My sorority sisters could be. Nobody could be there for me. I had to come to grips with where I was. And I said, um, someone introduced me to Hebrew 11, one of my former co-workers. And she said, I want you to read Hebrew 11 until you're tired of reading Hebrew 11 and then read it again. And I laid on Hebrew 11 for breakfast, snack, snack again, snack again, lunch, snack again, dinner, snack again. <laughs> I went to bed with 
word on laying on my chest reading Hebrew 11. And what I came to find, um, I had come to find in Hebrew 11 is that now faith mm -hmm. is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of, of things, things you cannot see. And let me tell you what, as a result of me reading it over and over again, every time I would read it throughout that day, I would discover another nugget hidden within Hebrew 11. Mm -hmm. And so what that did for me was I walked out on faith in that decision and I moved forward as God had told me to and he took care of my issue for me. I didn't even have to make a decision. And so I say to you that that was my experience uh, in walking out on faith. And I think so many of us stay where that little girl Pamela was at too. Mm -hmm. And we don't have the personal experience is what yes. I'm trying to say. Yeah. So many yes. of us see all of these religions, right? And I also believe that today, especially as we are understanding more and more about history, especially as black people, mm -hmm. uh, that there's so many hidden Bibles. Yes. And, and books in yeah. the books in the Bible. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's, so there's, two, there's two ways, as I see it, to God. There's yes. the word and understanding the word. And then there's your personal relationship. Mm -hmm. And so, again, I believe that a lot of us stay as that two year old little girl. And, and that really is in domestication. And, and, it, and it, it really, I think, um, stifles us from bringing who yes. we are and it confuses our minds who are we mm -hmm. in this thing called religion or this thing called spirituality let me not say religion in this thing called spirituality god who am i in you who do you create me to be because we all know that we're fearfully and wonderfully made amen and you know i wanted to touch on this too for a quick minute before we make this quick transition you know many years ago when oprah winfrey talked about there were many paths to get to where we're going in God mm -hmm. and learning about the who I am in God. It was a lot of rhetoric. So folks, we're not telling you how to live your life or what to believe. We're just sharing with you about domestication of religion so that you know, no matter what religion or spirituality or what you embrace as the I am, the God in you, that's your choice. We're just giving you some nuggets to help you grow. And with that said, we're coming right back and we are gonna step, roll forward from the faith and Dr. Sims gonna start us off with some facts. Be right back. No matter what it's been like, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, you can show up. You can stand up as your authentic self and bring who you are. I just love hearing I, that's just so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sims, what you got, Dr. Sims? Well, listen, I had to breathe for a minute because this is yes. really an, uh, this is really an awesome subject. And I think I, I'm not, I think I know that it's enlightening. Um, the fact of the matter, we're going to deal with facts. And let me give you the definition of what a fact is. Something that has actual existence something that is a fact you exist we know that there is a god that exists and many of you hit on the points of there's many religious avenues as oprah winfrey have depicted however the fact is you have to form your own realization of who god is you have to come to the knowledge of the truth of god for yourselves we've been trained and we, we're still talking about domestication there is a freedom in God. 
You have a right to choose how you believe. And I believe with all of the, the religious aspects of it, I know that in, in the end, in the end, it's all going to reflect and turn to God anyway. If you notice in the religious aspects, they have some, they have a, a, a commonology with each other that will lead you to, as you said, a higher power that does exist. That is a fact. But the other fact on the flip side, because, you know, I always deal with the flip side. There is emotional stressors and things that we have gone through as women coming up in the domestication area. And I heard Dr. Harper, you know, in the arenas of we have to do this, you know, there's a have to do this and mm -hmm. have to do that. However, it, it, I believe it kind of um, paralyzed us to venture out and know the God for ourselves because we've been paralyzed yeah. to think that it is one way and we have to follow this path. I've come to the realization because of the way I was trained as a young girl, as a young woman, it was like forced down my throat, you know, yes. you mm -hmm. do this and this is the way you're going to walk for God, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not free. But when I read in the word of God, it says, he whom the Lord set free is free indeed. Well, I had to embrace and look at the word freedom. Freedom is a right to choose. Freedom is a right to feel. Freedom is a way to walk uh, with God as he leads you to, not to be dictated to. But the thing that I don't want to get away from, yes, we have our blueprint. Yes, we have our plan. But you still have that choice in whether to follow that path. And so my thing is this, just God is just calling for a people. That's what my word says. Mm -hmm. God is calling for a people. Yes. I'm not getting away from the teachings that Jesus did. I'm not getting away from that. But we also, it also been noted that there are many books have been snatched away for control. Let's yes. look at history. They mm -hmm. snatched books away for, like we talk about slavery. They mm -hmm. talked about obeying the slave master. That's domestication. Yes, and they can look at the book where it says God loves, he cares. You know, he desires you to feel, he wants you to be loved, you know, and admonished. No, they took all of that away so that they can hold you captive. Yeah. And the same thing is applicable for today. That same type of mentality has been shared. So that is fact. That is fact, which caused the others, which caused the fear, which caused people to have lack of faith because of the tactics and how they pushed some their agendas because they are domesticators. And, and there are domesticators in all walks of life. And we're dealing with domestication. Domestication yes. is good, but there is a flip side, which makes it foul. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is a flip side, just like rules, the laws of the land, like just best said best. There is an ill behind it when those who are injecting the laws don't abide by the laws. It is, what it, is. Mm -hmm. it is what it is. Those who are preaching and teaching do not abide by that they're trying to domesticate me with are not abiding by themselves. They are not being examples. So I feel that God is, is relayed to us that we have to have a freedom mm -hmm. in expressing our love, expressing our position. That is fact. I have a right to feel the way I feel about my God. I have a right to the way I feel, the way I walk with God. Even though the plan is there, God still gave us a right to choose. He does not choke it down your throat mm -hmm. like we have done to many, many of us have done to not Amen. each other, but to others. He does not. He gives you a right to choose, you know, and whatever way you choose, then you reap that repercussion. But it is yet your right to choose, you see. And so don't hold each other in bondage because you may not believe the way I believe, okay? But you, as you grow, as you understand, and God has a way of revealing things to you if, it, you, if you want it to be unfolded to you. I love what you said about God not going to choke it down your throat. So you got the right to choose <laughs> and not choke. God gives us all that right. We don't have to choke this spirituality down. We just got to take it one piece at a time because it can change our lives and change our mind. Wow. I love that. I love what you just said about that. And I love how you open up with educating us about what a fact is. 
because mm -hmm. so much so many times we get caught up in myths and we don't really understand the facts are that we don't have to be in fear and so many times we are caught up in fear yeah les brown says it's false evidence appearing real so today folks of course we are talking about what faith facts and fear so that tell us a little bit about the fear component because so many people are shaking in their boots when it comes to to the domestication of religion and how fear is pushed up on people to conform. I, I listened to Pamela and how she said what that little girl, when mm -hmm. she saw what she saw at that age and no one was there to explain to her what was actually happening. Yeah. Fear is an unpleasant and often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. So when someone doesn't disclose with something that is foreign to them, naturally their reaction is going to be fear because it's foreign to them. Same thing in this in the religious synagogues or religious churches. Yeah. There's things that happen in there that are, are very foreign to one if they have not been introduced to it uh, before that time. So it causes fear. Uh, some domestication tactics causes restraints domestication causes restraints when you're restrained then it causes fear because then you have fear of freedom of doing what you want to do as far as getting your emotions and your spiritual uh well-being met so restraints fear that is caused brings danger into your emotions if i'm making myself clear here because when you're not accustomed to acting out a certain way or when you don't when you see something that is foreign to you uh, many times i wanted to retreat People interject fear in people to do a thing as well. Yep. They interject fear by dogmatic tactics, uh, verbiage that is uh, exploited over those. You do what I tell you to do or else, right. you know, yes. and it's in the religious sector too. I've been, I've sat under some people. Can I be transparent for a minute? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, I've absolutely. sat under yeah. some people who say, if you don't do this, then you're going to hell. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't do this, then God's going to cut you off. Well, listen, I know yeah, that right. God gives us warning on our ill behavior and disobedience. Mm -hmm. But some of the ones who are passing out laws are not acting out the law that they are passing out. Ooh, Amen. It's real talk, okay? Uh, because if you look into their darkened areas, into their hidden secrets, you will find out that they can't quite deal with what, or live up to what they are projecting on you. Right. And slavery wow. mentality is real today. Slavery yep. mentality is in the household. Slavery mentality has crept over into the religious aspect. And as it was brought out that the slave masters kept the slave into pocket. I heard somebody say that yep. uh, religious were written by a certain group of culture. And I said, you know, I, I beg to differ because if it was written by a certain culture, then they would project a little better love than what they portrayed. Yeah. Then they would give, you know, they would be harmonious. Mm -hmm. There would be no prejudices. There would be no indifferences uh, among the body of believers, but we have indifferences among our own that yes. causes conflict with what God wants us to learn of him. He's all about love. He's all yes. about respect. He's all about us getting along. I cannot choke down my theory down your throat. I can just give it to you. I can right. just tell you, this is what I feel. Mm -hmm. This is what I read. This is what I'm understanding. But we have people who inject fear and the word of God in Isaiah talks about that, a uh, beating uh, his children over the head, beating them into submission, into believing that thing that you want them to believe. And the Lord shares with me in the word of God, many of them have fall into the air pocket, walking in mm. error. OK, because they're going under their own thought process and not being led by reality. They're being led by what they want to the outcome of your behavior. Yes. They want a response on what they've thrown out. Mm -hmm. They want to control you to mm -hmm. co-sign with whatever they are projecting on you. And that yes. is all around. That is all around, mm -hmm. not just in the houses we call the buildings we call church. That is all around. So you walk away from that. You walk away from home, you're domesticated. You get in the church mm -hmm. in, re, in the, the religious aspect and you're domesticated, okay? Mm -hmm. Then you get to the job, you're domesticated. 
Where yes. is the breaking? Where is the breaking of embracing yourselves, you know, mm -hmm. that you don't have to walk in fear. You know, people yes. go down, lay down and sleep in fear. They wake up in fear. Did I do this right? Oh, I think I'm offended this what one. Oh my goodness. I, 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 did I, did I cut my Ooh. hand right? Oh, did Ooh. I sing too loud? Did I give enough right. in the offering? Oh, am I going to be kicked to the curb? Is anybody going to use me? Oh, I won't speak up because I am knowledgeable here. Am I going to just sit down and be quiet and let them keep doing what they're doing? And I know that it's wrong for fear because I want to be in the upper echelon in the notoriety sake. Am I just going to sit there and allow them to keep when my God tells me something different? Am I going to be held in captivity at all times at home, yeah. at church, at right. work, you know, because I'm taught to obey, you know, I'm taught to obey. Ooh. I'm that trained puppet. I'm that trained dog, you know, to obey and to walk the line as they've established with the line that they've established, they cannot walk themselves. And it is terrible. It is a terrible thing that we inflict on each other. So God is bringing us to the knowledge of the truth. He said, I am freedom. You embrace freedom. I am not fear. He said, I made you beautifully and wonderfully and I fearfully made you. Yes, he did. But he is not injecting fear on his people to walk mm. according to his statues. He does not. He injects love. And there's a scripture that I had. If I can read this, uh, Lotus, it says, yes, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Mm -hmm. And that is found in case some of you don't know. First John 418. Okay, my preaching done set in, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I am tired of people being held in captivity behind people who don't know the reality of truth, who don't know the word what freedom is. I have a right to pray when I want to pray. Yes. I have a right to sing unto my God when I want to. Oh, I have a right to talk to who I want to talk to. Amen. I don't have to be, I don't have to be under the dictates of people who are walking in air when there is no air in the word of God, period. Amen. Amen. Well, doc, I got, I got to say, oh, yeah. I've got it. You, I, you saw me. I said, take us to church. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Judge was like, preach. And, and <laughs> folks, you know, we, we let God do what God do. <laughs> and we just show up and bring who we are. Yeah. But what I love so much uh, that you said, and, and I got I got to locate this mm. thing because the fact of the matter is, is that you touched on that a lot of times people are saying and doing one thing and trying to get us to su succumb to their will mm. instead of succumbing to the will of God in our lives. Mm. And what we're doing is we're succumbing to that in, in so many ways because of fear. But the fact mm. of the matter is, you touched on it. You touched on it, Dr. Sims. You got to be about it, not just talk about it. Mm -hmm. You got to show up. You got to bring who you are. And I see so many comments and we are almost, we are almost at the end of the broadcast, folks. And I know y'all say, oh my God, it's just getting good. No, no, no. But look, <laughs> this, see, this lets you know what's coming next. Okay. What's coming next. So, uh, uh, Lacessless Forbes said, uh, paranoia, paranoia yes. is rampant. That yes. is so true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paranoia is rampant. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we have to break the bonds of paranoia. Yes. And she, she says it's definitely true. And Simone Rose said, God is love. If you love God, you must love your brother and sister mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I love that saying. So with that said, I tell you folks, we have had a wonderful time here today. Oh my God. You have got, I gotta, I gotta put this up here. Pam said, walk that talk, walk yeah. that talk. That's right. Oh, you gotta be real. You mm -hmm. can't talk about it. You gotta be about it. Let me bring this up on up here. Cause I want everybody to see this. So, you know, this is, this is Saturday, what we do to help you out. Mm -hmm. So when you go into into your your week next week remember this broadcast and walk that talk don't just talk about it okay 
don't just talk about it. And if you can't remember this, play, hit replay on this. Hit replay on this because <laughs> it's unequivocal. Dr. Sims opened this thing up. She exploded it and everybody followed suit. And she took us to church because we really <laughs> needed to go there. Because so many of us have seen this week globally has been a very challenging week for people for some reason. But we know this above all. God is about love and not fear. Amen. Mm -hmm. God is about love and not fear. Mm -hmm. And I hope that if you still in that slavery mentality, that you open up and understand that domestication of religion mm -hmm. causes restraint, fears, and paralyzes you. But not only religion, domestication in life. Yeah. So we're going to go to a quick break and we're going to come on back. And our tribe member is going to tell you what's going on in our next broadcast to come. So make sure you operate in, in faith and not fear. And we will be right back. Okay, be right back. <laughs> broadcast uh it, it's gonna be fine that's all i'm gonna say that's all uh, the, the person that's gonna lead us in next next time she gonna tell you what it's gonna be about she gonna tell you when it's gonna be well we went from family where it's our primary domestication then we went to our second stage of domestication which is religion because the religion and family go together you you go there but then we go to the next step, which reinforces and now separates you and categorizes you. And I think you know what I'm talking about, which is education. And before we go into next week in education, I just want to say, you know, faith is God. Religion is man-made. And we're now going into the institution that is literally man-made, which is education. And coming from so many different types of education in America and Jamaica and the English system, we are now going to discuss how our domesticated self in our primary sense in the family and our secondary in religion, we're now going to the tertiary level of second of domestication, which is education. How are you that square peg in that round hole? Are you being taught the right way or are you keep being told you're learning the wrong way? That's what we're going to discuss next week is domestication of education. And I look forward to the tribe again and I look forward to speaking with all of you. Thank you for being part of this. Thank you so much. We love you and it's going to rock. Judge, what's, what's your last words for this particular broadcast? Because we're about to light it up in domestication of, of, of education. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we've already, I think Dr. Sims and Dr. Harper already summed it up. But what we know is we know that no matter what, that God has given us the free will to do what we want. Eventually, I'll be talking about the domestication of our legal system and laws and how that further constrains us and not and it doesn't allow us to be free or to bring who we are and be authentic and have a true voice. We'll talk about slavery. We'll talk about the, the domestication of the law, it, the United States Constitution, um, the 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 legal system, sodomy, adultery, how it was once legal to rape or even beat your wife. How is that all constrained us? Is the system actually fair? Is it harmful or is it helpful? And we'll talk about that. Wow. Last Just, word. Last words, Pamela Luhin. <laughs> wow. This was powerful. And I think Judge Best said this could have easily been two hours. Two hours. True. Yes. Two hours. <laughs> we still got so. people streaming in. Oh my God. <laughs> Making comments. Oh my God. Jubilee! From Los Angeles. Yes, yes. 
So, you know, I guess in parting, you know, I would say, I would encourage everyone because I think that right now, more than ever, people are searching for God. They're yes. searching for answers to all this craziness in the land. And the only answer is in God. And so we have to yes. peel away the domestication and all those things and kind of untrain our brains so that we can be who we are and bring who we are to God and say, right. God, you can have them, you can accept them into your life right now and say, God, please come into my life. Show me who you are and, and you can have your own personal relationship. So I, I think above mm -hmm. all, people need to understand that you can have your own personal relationship with God. Wow. And Dr. Sims, and then we going to kick it back to Dr. Harper after Dr. Sims. She going to give you the date and folks, we love you. But after Dr. <laughs> Harper give you the date, we out of here. Dr. Sims. Well, God bless you all. It's been a pleasure today. This is a heavy, heavy topic when it comes to man's spirituality. But I want to encourage yes. everyone to seek out God for yourselves, mm -hmm. seek the answers and get the truth for yourselves. Yes, mm -hmm. we have guidelines. Yes, we have people we can talk to, but it's nothing like you seeking him for yourself mm -hmm. and getting to know him for yourselves, because that's going mm -hmm. to answer a lot of questions when the questions that you've asked in times past have not been able to be answered. So God is a prayer answering God. He does not want you to be blinded. He will also send a witness and yes. let you know that you're on the right track. Yes. You have to learn to trust him. Uh -huh. yes. Your faith has to increase in him. Stop looking at the past. Look towards the future. God can bring it out. Don't let your past hold you up from gaining the knowledge right. that you don't be stifled in your mind. Allow God to give you that freedom to think the wherewithal to grasp what he's really trying to tell you. Now you sometimes have to shut people out, stop listening to too many voices and allow God to speak to you personally. And I believe that's why he shut things down so that he can get our attention. Now you're going to have to uh, ask God, why, how mm -hmm. come can you handle this? And God says, I can do all of the above and I'm not afraid to come. Yes, Imaja, breathe. Amen. I am not afraid <laughs> uh, of your questions and your thought processes. I can answer everyone's question and not miss a beat. He will not leave you. If you lack knowledge, anyone that lacks knowledge, the word of God says, let him ask of God and he will Amen. give it to you. I want you to bring who you are. We're coming next week. I believe I'm supposed to do this. Amen. <laughs> Not next week. I don't have the date. August 8th. August 8th. Thank you so much. I'm the <laughs> who I am, y'all. Okay. I'm the coach to y'all. That's what they say. Okay. Come on down. Bring See, that's why we bring who we bring are, baby. Bring me. Got it now. That's Amen. Right. And I that's believe just, that God is in light. And I love you all. And that's what love does. It helps encourage us to move from a stagnant point to a place of reality, to walk in your there, and your there is freedom. Bring who you are, August 8th. Dr. Rebecca is going to bring us through in domestication of religion, but bring who you are. Yes. So August 8th, you said, Dr. Harper? August 8th is, and as Bob Marley said, free yourself from mental slavery. Got it. None but ourselves <laughs> and free our mind. minds. Awesome. You know, we and, love you. <laughs> you know, as they kill our prophets, we stand aside and look because we got to fulfill the book. You know, these are the lyrics from Redemption Songs, one of my favorite songs from Bob right. Marley. And yeah. he, Mine you know, too. we have to look at what is man made versus what actually God's word and God speaks with us inside. We go back to mm. our original roots of religion which is, you know, whether it's the Hebrew scriptures, whether it's the, the um, Quran, whether it is indigenous teachings, you know, we have to look at the inside where he spoke to each and every one of us and God is within us as um, a great family I used to be part of. We closed every day with the word Ashe, which is God is Ashe. inside us. Okay. And we have God inside us every day. And now we're going to take the power inside us to the school system, August 8th, join us as we discuss the domestication of education. Take care, everybody. We love you. Have Bye. a great weekend.
Bye-bye. Blessings. Bless you. Let's go boom.